and welcome. My name is Meepolis, she, they, and this is Literally Graphic. And today I'm doing the series wrap up for Aya by Marguerite Abut and Clement Oberi. If you don't want any spoilers, etc., check out my first review in the cards first. I reposted my initial review of Volume 1 last year and followed that up with a fresh review of Volume 2 in July of last year. And this wrap up is looking at Volume 3, The Secret Comes Out, and a compilation of Volumes 4 to 6, Love in Yop City. Moving over to Wikipedia, the hive mind says, quote, the original French albums were published by Gallimard between 2005 and 2010. All six volumes have been translated into English by John and Quarterly. Although not entirely autobiographical, the story is based on the author's life in the Ivory Coast. The authors adapted it for an animated film of the same title, which was released in 2013, end quote. Content notes for sexual harassment and assault with some nudity depiction of violent homophobia. Thinking about the way that these two kinds of violence are depicted, it was a bit rough at times, to be honest, but it was part of the larger arc of Aya and her friends coming of age and fighting to find their way in the world. So they win, as it were, and toxic patriarchy and homophobia lose. Uh, about and Oberi also don't linger on or decompress these scenes, and there's a lot of respect being shown visually for the main characters. But yeah, take care of yourself and feel free to avoid if this doesn't sound like it's for you. Keywords that came to mind finishing this series family, friends, community, loyalty, coming of age, gender, sexuality, contrast, subversion, and thriving. Going through volume three in particular, we really get to see Aya and her friends at the center of the story really come into their own and transition from being seen more as children to making their own ways as adults. Going to the Goodreads synopsis of a uh, Love in Yop City quote, while the stories found in Aya, Love in Yop City, maintain their familiar tone, quick pace, and joyfulness, we see Aya and her friends beginning to make serious decisions about their future. When a professor tries to take advantage of Aya, her plans to become a doctor are seriously shaken and she vows to take revenge on the lecherous man. With a little help from the tight-knit community Yapogon, though, Aya comes through these trials stronger than ever." End quote. The dialogue in these volumes was extremely expressive and the main avenue I felt like I got to know each character. The page layouts, as you can see, are pretty similar and fall more or less into the basic squares camp. I feel like it's almost a metronome style of page layout, which forces the artist to think very closely on what they will show in each frame. There is a short section of the book which is illustrated using photos of the author and other people. Overall, yeah, I really enjoyed the art style. Gender has obviously been a big focus for the series, as its entire premise is to focus on the life of a young woman as she's growing up. A combination of important, entertaining, and interesting. I love that this series exists, I learned a lot, and I'm glad I'm seeing more and more people talk about it. Sexuality became more of a focus as the series continued, not only in the ways that Aya and her friends are coming together or not and starting their own families or how they are being harassed by the toxic men in their lives, but also with the increased focus on Innocent, who is a gay man, and his journey. After Volume 3, Innocent decides to move to Paris, France, and in the final three volumes, there's a lot of switching back and forth between Yop City and Paris, and Innocent really becomes a second main character. Not only did this make the book feel a bit more intersectional, but it really went the extra mile to subvert and counter ideas about how France would obviously be better than the Ivory Coast just for being a quote western nation. A series by a black woman about a black woman, race also comes into clear focus when Innocent immigrates to Paris. His class position as an undocumented black immigrant 
uh, finding work and life in Paris is also really explored and not avoided. The end material also goes into some more detail about how the emigration process differs now versus when the series is set, which I also found very interesting. Ability versus disability was largely avoided, I think, besides a couple of older characters having life-threatening health conditions. Wrapping things up, to conclude, my ratings for various volumes have moved back and forth between a fairly fond 3 out of 5 stars and 4 out of 5 stars. But to finish things off, I really felt like this bind-up of the final three volumes was top, top notch, and I'm giving them 5 out of 5 stars. Bye all, keep reading and resist white supremacy. And literally graphic is created on land that should be given back to the traditional landholders. Which in this case is, to my knowledge, the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, Anamishnabe people, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Huron-Wendat Nation.